Thank you very much. As chairman of the um, subcommittee of the Senate Judiciary on uh, constitutional amendments, I've had a personal point of view on this for a long time when it comes to the nature of amendments being offered. I think the Constitution is written with the amendments uh, that have been adopted constitute a sacred document that has guided this country well for decades and centuries. Too often I have seen proposals for constitutional amendments which, in my view, take a roller to a Rembrandt. And I have resisted many efforts to entice me into co-sponsoring constitutional amendments with rare exceptions. This is one of those exceptions. I am co-sponsoring this amendment offered by Senators Tom Udall and Michael Bennett. I believe the time has come for us to do something to save this democracy and the political process that supports it. Secondly, let me say at the outset that there is hardly a politician, elected official alive, who has not changed his or her position on an issue. Uh, and that happens. Uh, I can recall when Abraham Lincoln was criticized for changing his position on an issue, and he said, I'd rather be right some of the time than wrong all the time. So we're all at least can be charged uh, with having done that in the past and maybe be guilty of the charge. But it is breathtaking, the change that has taken place with the Republican Party in the United States Senate on this issue. In 1987, the Republican Senate leader, who just testified, Senator McConnell, introduced a constitutional amendment, a constitutional amendment very similar to the one before us today. And this is what he said on the floor of the Senate in introducing it about his amendment. This would give to Congress an opportunity to level the playing field, eliminate the millionaire's loophole, put everybody on the same footing so that the meat cutter and coal miner and taxi cab driver and anybody else in American society who can go out and get a lot of support from a lot of people could still raise the money, use the television, get into the race and build the contest. He went on to say, the fellow who inherited it or is shrewd enough to go out and get it could not use his personal money to buy political office. He would have to get the same broad-based support the rest of us who are not millionaires must do. That's a problem we can cure immediately, end of quote. That is what Senator McConnell said about his constitutional amendment offered in 1987, which parallels the amendment before this committee today. And then time passed. And by 2002, the story was different. By 2002, we were debating McCain-Feingold, the elimination of soft money in the campaign process. And then the position was taken by the senator from Kentucky and many on his side, we just want full disclosure. We just want to know who's contributing the money. The American people have a right to know. That was the mantra for a long period of time. I just asked my colleague, Senator Schumer, as chairman of the Rules Committee, whether any Republicans supported our effort when we introduced the Disclose Bill which would have disclosed the contributors to political campaigns. And our best memory is no. They now don't support disclosure. And so here we are today. Many of us had hoped that Fair Elections Now, a public, public financing bill, which I introduced seven years ago and keep reintroducing, might have a chance. But with the Citizens United decision, I'm afraid that's not likely. When you look at the reality of what we're so far this year, Spending by outside groups in campaigns has tripled, tripled since the last midterm election. 27.6 million in 2010, 97.7 million so far this year. In 2006, before Citizens United, these groups spent three and a half million dollars. In 2012, Super PACs spent more than 130 million dollars on federal elections. 60 percent of all Super PAC donations that year came from an elite class of 159 Americans. 159 Americans accounted for 60 percent of the money from super PACs going into these election campaigns. In North Carolina, that elite, elite group had one member. 72 percent of all outside spending in 2010 came from a millionaire named Art Pope. Can you guess who Governor Pat McCrory named as North Carolina's budget chief writer in 2013? Mr. Pope, who bankrolled the governor's campaign and supported the Republican supermajority that recently enacted the most restrictive voter suppression law in America. Mr. Chairman, we need to do this to save the political process in America. 
What is at stake here is going to discourage mere mortals from engaging in this process. When you're up against multimillionaires from the start with unlimited contributions through Citizens United, you will lose the appetite for the contest. We can't let that happen. Neither political party can let that happen. 